Hello everyone, uh, good morning. Um, this time I am back with another video and I have got the intrauterine contraception um, devices uh, guideline summarized for you. So this is the FSRH guideline. This is in hope that um, this will help you for your revision of MRCOG part two and three. So it's a long acting reversible contraception. 52 milligrams of levonorgestrel uh, intrauterine device, Mirena, or 20, which releases up to 20 micrograms of levonorgestrel per day, which then reduces to 10 micrograms per day after five years. So the uses are for contraception, for heavy menstrual bleeding and endometrial protection. This is for the Mirena. Now, 13.5 milligrams of liver not just drill um, intrauterine device also exists. It's called the JDIS. Um, it's, it releases 14 micrograms per day for um, the first 24 hours and then 5 micrograms uh, per day after three years um, of use. And the, the use of this J, of the, of the JDIS is for contraception alone. So the most effective uh, intrauterine contraceptive device is the levonorgestrel um, intrauterine device or the T-shaped uh, uh, copper coil with 380 millimeter square of copper and copper bands on the transverse arms. The mode of action uh, of the coil is basically it interferes with implantation it also reduces the rate of blastocyst formation with the copper copper has direct effects um, on the uh, ovum and the sperm and hence inhibits fertilization it also uh, alters the content of copper in the cervical mucus hence inhibits sperm penetration if fertilization has already occurred, then the endometrial inflammatory reaction has an anti-implantation effect with the copper coil. So this is the criteria for excluding pregnancy. Now it says healthcare professionals can be reasonably certain that a woman is not currently pregnant if any one or more of the following criteria are met and there are no symptoms or signs of pregnancy. So the criteria is she has not had intercourse since last normal menses. She has been correctly, correctly and consistently using a reliable method of contraception. She's within the first seven days of the onset of normal menstrual period. She's not breastfeeding in less than four weeks from giving birth. She's fully or nearly fully breastfeeding, amenorrheic and less than six months postpartum. She's within the first seven days post abortion or miscarriage. A negative pregnancy test, if available, adds weight to the exclusion of pregnancy, but only if greater than three weeks since the last episode of unprotected sexual intercourse. Okay, so I will um, now give you just a few minutes so you can um, look at this very, very important slide. It goes um, through when you can have the coil inserted um, for postpartum, for uh, all the circumstances, following abortion, following um, administration of oral emergency contraception. So it goes um, through when the Mirena and the copper coal can be inserted and whether any extra precautions are needed. So for all circumstances, the copper coil can be inserted at any time in the menstrual cycle. Okay. Um, and no additional contraception is required. For the Mirena coil, any time in the menstrual, menstrual cycle, if reasonably certain that a uh, woman is not pregnant or is at risk of pregnancy. Additional contraception is required 
for seven days unless inserted in the first seven days of the menstrual cycle. For postpartum, um, includes poor cesarean section and breastfeeding. For the copper coil, it can be inserted within 48 hours of delivery or from four weeks after delivery um, if it is reasonably certain that the woman is not pregnant or at risk of pregnancy um, and no additional contraception is required. For the Mirena coil, it can be inserted within 48 hours of delivery. From four weeks after delivery, it is reasonably certain the woman is not pregnant or at risk of pregnancy. And additional contraception. Um, so if it's inserted within 48 hours of delivery, you do not need any um, ex additional contraception. But after four weeks, yes, uh, additional contraception is required for seven days unless inserted within the first day one to seven of um, natural menstrual cycle. Okay. So STI screen should be offered to all women who want the um, coil fitted. Prophylactic antibiotics are not routinely required uh, for insertion or removal of the coil. The use of copper coil uh, may be associated with also reduced risk of endometrial cancer and cervical cancer. The Mirena coil is also um, shown to reduce pain and so that's primary dysmenorrhea. So pain associated with primary dysmenorrhea, endometriosis or adenomyosis. Side effects like with any progesterone um, side effects, so acne, breast tenderness, pain, headache, weight gain. Um, it's generally known that these um, side effects do um, decrease or go down with time. So in the first um, sort of three to six months, um, patients can have irregular, prolonged or frequent bleeding, which certainly improve with time. Non-hormonal contraception should be considered for patients with history of breast cancer. Now, if there is any need of insertion of uh, a, a coil, then um, their um, oncology specialist should be contacted. There's no increased risk of VTE or MI, which is venous thromboembolism or myocardial infarction. Um, the, there is, if there is pregnancy with um, the quail, um, then it is likely to be ectopic pregnancy. So it does in, slight, you know, increase the risk of having an ectopic pregnancy. The risk of expulsion um, with the quail is around 1 in 20, especially in the first year of use and in the first year, particularly within the first three months. Very, very important numbers for the exam. The rate of uterine perforation is 2 per thousand ins of insertions and uh, it's approximately sixfold higher in breastfeeding women. So that's sixfold higher in breastfeeding women. So two per thousand is risk of perforation. Return of fertility is generally similar to what the oral contraceptive and barrier methods offer. If a patient has recurrent um, bacterial vaginosis or, um, or fungal infections like uh, candida, then uh, with use of copper coil, then alternative method of contraception should be advised. So um, if a patient has no threads visible, then uh, you should exclude a pregnancy because it's, it's likely the coil may have fallen out. Uh, after you've ex excluded that, then advise alternative contraception and range an ultrasound scan consider use of emergency contraception. If the device is located in the uterus after the scan, um, then leave it in situ until uh, or due to be removed. Um, you can use thread retriever or, or long forceps um, to, um, you know, get the threads out, um, but you also may need to look with hysteroscope. Now, if the device is not located within the uterus, then request x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis. If the device is located, then um, that's a yes, then it confirms perforation because it means that the device is out of the uterus. 
arrange um, elective laparoscopic removal um, unless bowel or the, or blood vessel injury perforation is suspected offer reinsertion of the coil um, after minimum of four weeks after perforation if um, the device is not located uh, on the x-ray then um, if film adequate that is entire abdominal cavity and the pelvis is seen this confirms expulsion of a reinsertion of the coil or an alternative method. So for PID, um, it's not routinely required to have the coil removed straight away. Um, however, if there is no response to antibiotics within 72 hours, then removal of coil is advised. For cardiac disease, um, it's recommended, especially for things like um, single ventricular circulation, um, S Esamengas physiology, tachycardia, or pre-existing bradycardia, because they can be risk of a vasovagal reaction. These patients are generally advised to have the coil fitted in a hospital setting um, where this condition can be managed. Um, it also may re may require discussion with a cardiologist before it's done. So that's it on the coil. I hope um, you have gained some very important information from this video for your exams. And if you do, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, and also leave a comment down below as to uh, what um, sort of videos you'd like to see more um, to help with your MRCOG part two revision. Thank you very much.